Hello and welcome to Women's Collective Thinking Into Results, a place you can come to start shifting your thoughts to finally create the results you truly desire. I'm your host, Angie Gerber. Let's get started. In this episode, we're going to talk about living from the inside out versus the outside in and what that means and really dive into it a little bit. So first and foremost, we live from the outside in, meaning that we have hear, see, smell, taste, touch as our five senses. We all learned them in school. We learned to live by them. We knew we knew what they meant. We learned what they meant. And that is, again, if you remember in the early years of school, what we went by. What's interesting is that if you take all the animals on the planet, most all of them have the ability to hear, see, smell, taste, and touch, including humans. What's different and one of the only differences between many of them is that humans, you know, if you look at a horse, a pig, cow, humans, hearts, lungs, brain, all the things, hear, see, smell, taste, touch. What makes humans different and unique is we have higher faculties. And those are perception, will, imagination, intuition, memory, and reason. See, we are the only animals that are really uncomfortable and can't quite figure out how to navigate our environment because of our higher faculties. All the other little creatures and animals, they adapt. They are at home in their environment. You don't have to teach a squirrel to go out and you know, store nuts for the weekend. You don't have to teach a bear what they need to do in order to hibernate. All the other animals are just really used to and at home in their environment. And again, it's because of our higher faculties that we are different and become so disorientated in our own environment and cause ourselves a lot of the issues that we're having. If you listen to Einstein in his quote, and I'll say it twice, so the it's the intuitive mind is a sacred gift, and the rational mind is a faithful servant, and we have created a society that honors the servant and has forgotten the gift. Now, the intuitive mind is a sacred gift, and that is our higher faculties. Again, our intuitive mind would be our perception, will, imagination, intuition, memory, and reason. And the the servant is our five senses. So we have created a society that honors the servant or our five senses and has forgotten our gifts. Therefore, that's living from the inside out versus the outside in. How many times do you get in a bad mood because of something you heard, or maybe something you saw on TV or on social media, or a conversation you've had with someone else? Maybe you log in and you look at your bank account and you're really upset because the numbers aren't just, they're not there. And you're coming from lack and fear and scarcity because you don't know what you're going to do tomorrow or in the next couple of weeks when rent or your mortgage might be due. And again, that is where so many people, they just live from. They live from this place where they let all of the outside world control how they choose to show up and what they choose to think about and how they choose to feel. We leave our subconscious mind completely wide open and accept whatever is coming our way. A couple things that you can do to really start combating this and more or less just understanding it. First and foremost, we all just need to have the awareness around just this, this simply this by choosing to turn off the news. And I promise you by doing so, you will stay informed. There's a complete and huge difference between being informed and staying informed and being inundated. Quit inundating yourself with all this information. I promise you, I haven't watched the news on a regular basis for many years. 
I know what's going on. It will find you. You will know. You don't have to have it on hours a day. You will figure it out. I promise. To shut down social media, maybe put a time limit on it. If someone's saying something that you don't agree with, instead of combating with them and really starting an argument, what Bob Proctor taught me to say is, that's interesting, and switch the subject. You're not going to change their mind more than likely. They're not going to change your mind more than likely. So what is the point of sitting there and just bashing it out until one of you is so pissed off that the other one, you just leave and you're done. And now you're upset. I mean, think about the last couple years and what's happened to families, what's happened to workplaces, what's happened to relationships, what's happened to schools and churches. I mean, there's so much stuff that has happened that has divided us as a society, as people, just because we don't feel the same way about certain subjects. When did it become okay to not agree? When did it become not okay to not agree? Why is that a thing? I really encourage you to think about that and really, really let that sit with you. So when we went to school, you know, when we're born, we have just our our whole world is open to us. And what happens is that because our subconscious is wide open, we become a product of our environment. So the the people that raised us, the environment we're in, the language that was spoken around us, the food that we consumed and the people around us ate is what we would eat. That language is what we would speak. The values would become our values. And by the time we were seven or eight years old, our paradigms were a part of us. They were put there by people that were doing the very best they could with the information, the knowledge, and the awareness they had at that particular time in life. And again, our paradigms, they're with us today. And more than likely, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years later, They no longer serve us, and yet that is where we live from every day. And now, what the beautiful thing is, is in thinking into results, it shows you not only how your paradigms got there, why they're there, and most importantly, how you can change them. And there's two ways to change them, and that is through repetition or uh, emotional impact such as 9-11, they use different emotional impacts. It could be a death, it could be a loss of a job, it could be a birth. It could be so many different things that impact you emotionally. Uh, But more likely, the way you're going to go about changing your paradigms is through the repetition, which is a whole another another episode. Uh, But living from the inside out is really taking your higher faculties and working with those versus letting the outside control how you feel and show up on the inside. Now, it takes a lot of discipline. It takes understanding and awareness and some tips and tricks and tools to use in order to live this way. It's really, it's a lifestyle change. It's not just something that you show up and do here and there. It is something that you want to devote time to. Uh, every day, just becoming better. If you only became 1% better every day, imagine where you'd be at the end of the year. If you just took time out for yourself to work on one of your higher faculties, and maybe take five minutes, do an exercise of imagination where you truly sit down. And again, regardless of what your bank account says, who do you want to be in a year? Where do you want to be? What goals do you have? Is it a different job? Is it a vacation? Is it a home? Is it a relationship? Is it spirituality? Is it your health? What goal do you have and where you want to be? What would success look like in a year? And what so many people do is they wake up and they look around, they look at themselves in the mirror. Again, they look in their bank account, they look for people around them to validate them. And when none of that's happening, they 
turn inward and they go nowhere. So what you I encourage you to do is to use your imagination for five minutes a day. The best time is when you wake up in the morning because your subconscious is the most open and right before you go to bed and really sit and visualize what it feels like to have your goals already here and done today as if it's a year out and you have what it is you desire, whether again, health, relationship, material things, vacations, whatever it would be, feel it as if it's here and done today and connect to that frequency and feel it as if it's already done today. Because the interesting thing about your imagination is it can't tell the difference. You can watch, again, golfers are really good at this. They will sit and they will imagine their shot before they take it. Uh, There are studies that you take Olympic runners or you take Olympic athletes and you hook them up to those little electrodes all over their muscles and they shut their eyes and they run their event or they perform their event as if they're doing it and their muscles will fire off as if, if it's actually happening. That is how powerful our imagination is. And that is why it is such an important higher faculty and sacred gift that we have as humans, that many people, most people, 90, 95% of people don't pay attention to because they're so busy living from the outside in. So if you do this twice a day, three times a day, however often you can do it, you'll start seeing and feeling the results. And again, it's sit down, shut your eyes, pick a quiet spot, and really visualize you've reached your goal. And what does that feel like? And I encourage my clients often to take it a step further. And then ask yourself, what is that person showing up like today? If you have the business that you dream of, if you have the relationship that you dream of, if you have the health that you dream of, what does that person look like today? What decisions do they make? What time do they wake up? What does their morning routine look like? Because I'll tell you, if you don't have a morning routine, it's very important that you think about getting one because the way you set your day and the way you start your day will set the tone for the rest of your day. If you're having chaotic mornings, again, get up a little bit earlier. Save yourself some time throughout the day by setting yourself up for success at the beginning of the day. It truly will make a difference. And by showing up and making a different choice in the morning, your whole day could be 100% different if you're one that lives from you know, hurry and always running late and and just not having the stamina or getting tired. You know, it's so interesting. People talk about, well, I don't have enough time in the day. I don't have this. I can't do that. I run out of time. We all get the same amount of time in our day. You can't control time. How do you, how do you take care of your, you know, people ask, how do you do, how do you do everything? You know, how do you run your calendar? How, how do you have so much time? And again, the truth is we all get the same amount. It's what activities you put in your time. What do you value? And I encourage you to think about this as well. When you say yes to something, what are you saying no to? I used to be a huge yes person. Yes, 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 yes. That's all I'd ever say. And I put myself last and the other people, you know, always went first. It was so funny at my wedding. I think every one of my bridesmaids stood up and said, yep, she's so dependable. That Angie, you could call her at two in the morning and she'd be there. Yeah. And that's fantastic. And I'm very grateful that people can depend on me like that. And at the same time, I think we all need to have boundaries. We all need to have limitations. We all, especially as women, need to know it's okay to say no, and it's okay to protect yourself and your time, because if you're saying yes to other people, more than likely, you're saying no to yourself, and that can be even just a great place to start. So as you move forward through your week, I encourage you to be intentional about 
the information you surround yourself with, the information you let into your mind, because again, our conscious mind, it can accept or reject whatever comes our way. And it's through the repetition of us hearing things and watching things and listening to things and having the same conversations. That's what goes into our subconscious. And that's how our paradigms are formed. And that's where the emotional mind is. So through your subconscious, you'll either take action or you won't take action. And by going into action, you'll get the results. So if you aren't liking your current results, you got to back it up into what you're feeling, and you get what you're feeling from what you're thinking. So your thoughts truly do become things and become your results. So again, it's thinking into results. Start today. Thanks for spending some of your day with me. When you're ready to learn more about Thinking Into Results, the program that has changed millions of people's lives in every country across the world, including mine, reach out. I do a free discovery call and would love to connect and learn more about your goals, your dreams, and your desires. The link is in the show notes or feel free to email me at angiegerber at gmail.com. Until next time, start thinking into results today.